On to the second segment, Callum and the first game within that is the Saints. The Saints coming off a home loss last weekend against the Bucks. A lot of people felt they would have rebounded off their previous defeat to the, to the Packers, but they didn't. They lost 23-9, and they go on the road into New England. And New England are having the troubles of their own after last week. Um, in particular, Mac Jones has been axing the game in the third quarter, and Bill Belichick played it down. But... Things don't seem right for me with the Patriots, and they're going up against the Saints team that, by and large, the defense has played quite well throughout the course of the season. You see Mac Jones finally going to get over the hump in this one, or is the Saints defense another team that he will struggle against and put a true test up and Saints ultimately coming out on top? This is this is a tough game to, to call because I, I would expect Belichick will get a response from the Patriots, and they'll they'll have to... You know they can't be as flat as they they were uh, the other night. I I like the the Saints have been fine at times, but the, to me, yeah, things look bleak in in New England, right? Because I I don't I don't think they have enough on offense to um to score points, and and even if Mac Jones gets back to where he was year one. I, I just don't, yeah, I don't think it's there. But equally with the Saints, I don't think everything is right there. And I think Dennis Allen, you know, he's a great defensive coordinator. I just don't know if it's going to work with Dennis Allen as uh, a head coach. Um, they, you, you look at the Patriots and obviously with Gonzalez um, going out and bringing back JC Jackson. Now, what a move. I mean, and, and why why you would ever take a cornerback from Bill Belichick um, is ridiculous. He is I've it, there's nobody like him. Like his ability um, to to turn bad players into to good players, and that's what's so sad about seeing um, Gonzalez go down because he was a gifted player who was going to be in, an incredible uh, cornerback. You, you felt, um, but losing Judon as well. Uh, the, I'm gonna go Saints, um, but th- I, I, I'm not gonna expect th- this to be a high-scoring game. This could be reminiscent of the Colts versus the Broncos last year. Yeah, I've been very disappointed with the Saints off- offensively. I was one who was chapping at the bit going the season. I was playing the Derek Car- Derek Carr card that he was going to bring back the expansive offense. Kamara would be best suited. Williams is there. Obviously, he's gone on IR, and I thought Olave would build up a connection. He has, but still, we're not seeing it. I mean, the wins they've had are more so because of how well the defense has played to keep them in games, and they've come out the right side of it. But ultimately, they were found out last weekend, only scoring nine points at home against the Bucks in the previous week with a 17-point lead. They managed to throw that away. But I'm with you because you're, you look at two defenses. One, you've got the Patriots defense now that are missing players. Is J.C. Jackson going to come in on Sunday and be able to kind of fit right in immediately, I, I like despite the fact he was there previously and he understands the nature of what Bill Belichick is two years removed from when he was there. He's going to need to time to settle in. Judon's gone. I, again, I agree. It's a low-scoring game. I think the Saints come out on the right, right side of it. It's just the struggle on offense, unless we see Mac Jones come out on Sunday. Like There's times this season where Mac Jones has had the opportunity to win games. Week one against the Eagles, the Dolphins game, and he keeps talking about, we need to do better, we need to get it done. But when is he going to get it done? Because Patience is a key in this league at times, but like surely the Patriots fans are kind of looking at this now going, this seems to be, you know, coming to an end. This can't continue. You know, ultimately, you know, they're not really in a position to replace him this year, but I don't know whether in the long term it's going to be, it's going to be uh, sustainable. So for me, Saints win. They they take the win and Patriots struggles offensively. Continue and talk about offenses that can't move the ball. That brings us to the Giants. Uh, Giants on the road in Miami, and they're one team that can very much move the ball, certainly at home. And we see about 70 points up in the last home game against your beloved Broncos. Um, do you see a 70 point, 70 burger, as, as Connor would, would say? Do you see something similar on Sunday with the Giants defense also struggling? They did play better on Monday. I would say that they played a lot better, but offensively, with no, the offensive line is a complete disaster. And whether you like Daniel Jones or not, he's just not getting time to even get past the second read at the moment. Uh, yeah, I, I I mentioned the uh, the verve uh, a, a little while ago. Um, they also had the the drugs don't work. Uh, well, nothing apparently works for the Giants on offense currently. It it looks you know it looks awful. Um, you can see Dable is 
really frustrated. Um, I, I know, um, you know, you you have a lot of thoughts on on the issues, but I can't help but think that if they if they could go get a time machine, uh, they wouldn't give Saquon a two or three year deal and franchise tag Daniel Jones. I just think the message that it's sent isn't isn't good. But uh, yeah, ultimately the the main issue is, is the line. Um, and Evan Neal is a is an abject disaster. I was, I was talking to you um, earlier today, and I said they they're going to have to either move him to guard or they're just going to have to bench him. You you cannot continue with Evan Neal at, at tackle. It just it's he's going to he's going to get his QB killed. Um, he may maybe he has been a little bit humbled uh, given the response. Um, he made some very silly comments against the fans. That's frustration again. I think there's a, a huge amount of frustration with the Giants because nothing has worked for them, and now they have to go to Miami against a team that's going to want to get back on track following a really a disappointing loss for them they thought that they could go up to buffalo they could put a marker down they could show um that they were the best i i think for the dolphins the concern for the dolphins should be that this Vic Fangio defense does not look great um you know the the bend don't break stuff if you've a really talented offense um you can get at them uh i I, I think, unfortunately, our two receptive teams don't have that. I don't see the Giants uh, conceding 70 because um, I think Wink Martindale will have them up. I did like his quip uh, that he was sleeping like a baby and that he was up every two hours. He, he was crying and going to the bathroom. Um, but I do think he'll have the Giants defensively in a better position. But yeah, I can't. I can't see beyond the Dolphins. But then you say that in the NFL, right? You say that I can't see beyond the Dolphins, and then mad stuff happens, right? Um, I like the Cardinals beating the the Cowboys, but I the Dolphins need to get, need a win. Uh, they need to get ready to get over the the Bills game. So I think they get it. There's a lot of people that were suggesting last week's Bills. Uh, win and the manner of how the game was played in terms of them putting 48 points it was a real downer for the Dolphins but I think the Dolphins need to step back and just realise we're having a really good season we're still tied with with you know we're still tied with this team at the top of the division you know so let's not let's not panic you know they still have to play each other again in Miami that, that, that will come around again it was the opposite way around last year Bills went down there early in the season Dolphins beat them they came to December there was a Saturday night game the Bills reversed the result like we could see the same thing come, come happen you know, later on the season when when the Bills have to go into Miami. But you're right, they've got to get back on, on track. And to be honest, this is a perfect game for them to get back on track. And, and you talk about the defence. Defence against the Giants don't really have to worry at the moment in terms of the secondary. And so if they can pin their ears back and go after the quarterback, and like you would imagine, they're going to do the same. Now, it looks like Saquon is finally going to come back on Sunday. Maybe that will be a huge help and allow, relieve the pressure because they may have to scheme against the fact that he's back there was they haven't neither of the teams that they played over the past two weeks from the NFC West and the Niners and Seattle have had to kind of concern themselves with a, with a, with a run game, which, to be honest, has been mediocre. Matt Breida went for something like 38 yards on, on Monday night. Dolphins, for me, I don't see it as a blowout. I think they will win. I think they'll cover that spread, which is 10 points, but I don't see it being one of those crazy games where they're up by 30, 40 points, and people, which people assume will happen on, on, on Sunday because you said it. Like Sometimes when teams come off a really difficult loss, they find ways to kind of regalvanize themselves, not necessarily come out on the, right, on the right side of a result, but play a lot tougher the following week. I think it might be a bit of a tougher game for the Dolphins than people expect, but I still see them winning this game. We'll move on to the next one, and this is an enticing game in the in the AFC South because right now every team in the AFC South is 2-2, two and two, and the Titans who have won both their home games, can't seem to get a win on their own, struggled in both road games, going into Indianapolis, and we talked about it in the offseason when we were doing our AFC South discussions in June, in August. These teams tend to beat each other on the road. It just seems to be one of these common teams in the division. They flip-flop results. Do you see it this weekend? Do you think the Titans will get their first road win? Or are you, are you buying into the Anthony Richardson frame, which was really impressive, bear in mind the fact that they still lost the game, but the manner that comeback against the Rams at home last weekend. 
Yeah, well, I think anyone who watches this uh, show or listens to the show for any length of time will know I'm a big fan of Anthony Richardson. I'm a massive fan of Shane Steichen. Uh, I think he's going to go on to do uh, big things with the the goals if Jim Irsay can stay out of the way. That's a big if, of course. Um, but uh, something I saw during the week, Brian, right, is most games with 100 plus yards against a single opponent since 2010. Nick Chubb has six games of more than 100 yards against the Bengals. I still want to to see him uh, back. Adrian Peterson had six games of more than 100 yards against the the Packers. Derek Henry has six games with more than 100 yards against the Jags. He's got six games more than 100 yards against the Texans. And he has seven games of more than 100 yards against the Colts. The Colts cannot stop Derrick Henry. And I think that is ultimately the difference in this one. Uh, Again, um, the Titans make no sense. Um, And I think they will find it tougher because the the Bengals have a real issue with Joe Burrow. He shouldn't be out there. Um, And Anthony Richardson should be out there. Shane Steichen is a gifted um, schemer. And I, I, I think the Colts are headed in the right direction. I have concerns about the, the Titans roster, but as you said, this is a division where things follow a trend. And for that reason, I'm going to go with the Titans even though I look at it objectively, I say the Colts should win this. But no, the the things happen in this division. It's the Titans. Aiden and Connor both went for the Colts. I was genuinely was taken back by the fact that there was so much confidence around the Colts in this one. Like the Colts had a great comeback the second half last weekend, but the, for the first half, Anthony Richardson was held in check. The Rams did a great job, and now in fairness, he just at a half time they came out. Really well. Vrabel, for me, strikes me as the kind of head coach that will be scheming all week to find a way to navigate around Richardson. And I'm with you. I think I think the Titans are quietly going about their business at the moment. They struggled on the road in the other two games. This game will be more suited to them. It's in the dome. In, um, well, under cover, shall we say, in Indy. And I have them coming out the right side. I think this is the game we see Derek Henry. In fairness, he had a good game last weekend. Touchdown. Really dominant performance against the struggling Bengals offensive fairness. But in this one, I'm leaning Titans. I'm not 100% confident. I think it might be a tight one, but we'll go Titans. Talk about Joe Burrow there losing in Tennessee last weekend, and that is where we come, come to the last game in this segment, the force of the later games at 9 o'clock, and that is the Bengals on the road in Arizona. And a few weeks ago, we would have looked at this and said, this is the Bengals team that are supposed to be going to the Super Bowl, AFC number one, see it potentially. This is a gimme. Is it a gimme now, bearing in mind how well Arizona played? Look, the results last weekend against, sorry, against the 49ers looks like it was a very comfortable day out for. But in the tour quarter, they scored a touchdown. The rookie, who looks very impressive, the wide receiver, Wilson, two touchdowns last weekend. They brought that game back within one score to the 49ers. 49ers pull away in the fourth quarter. They're playing really well for this head coach. We didn't see it coming. We talked at him. Was, you know, we saw all the off-the-field stuff leading up to the season. We weren't convinced. But he is getting a tune out of him. Do they find a way to get to cause a shock again? Another home game, hence another shock against one of the teams that are expected to be there, thereabouts come the end of the season. I I think they could, Brian, because I just don't think Burrow should be out there. I mean, he cannot drive the the ball. He can't move properly in the the pocket. Um, they they're putting him they're putting him out there. I think, and he's going out there because he's so important to them and because he he did sign the contract and I think he feels a degree of pressure because of that um and uh I you know the the Tom Moore story uh, famously comes to to mind around Peyton Manning and not giving snaps to the backup and that's where the Bengals find themselves you know um because they they have to to play burrow but I just don't think that calf is is right, and you just see it. Like there, I saw a compilation of um, passes uh, on um, a video during the the week, and he he's no power. My God, he's got no power. He looks, um, you know, like an aging QB. Now he will get it back. 
right? But what they would have been infinitely better doing is allowing him to sit out the first month of the, the season. But they didn't. He tweaked it again. I'm I'm going to go with the shock here. Um, and, and, and the Bengals were my Super Bowl pick, lest we forget. Uh, I thought they were absolutely all set up for it. Um, but um, the, the Cardinals players are playing for their careers in the NFL and for future contracts. And, um, yeah, I'm going to say they, they shock. Uh, whether it, it, as I, say, I think you're right. It w- it's not as big a shock as it once would have been, um, but it, st- it would still be a surprise. When we did our Crow Park show and I we spoke with the Browns hosting the Bengals and I said Browns because I said people are playing this conversation down. We've seen it in the past. We saw it with Matthew Stafford's injury last year. People were suggesting, no, everything's fine. I wasn't convinced and it's come to fruition. He's not playing well. We saw it last week again. You're right, I saw the coverage during the week. He looks like a guy that just can't show it, but you just can't put the velocity in the shows that we once saw. And look, it will, as you said, it'll come around again. You know, come the end of the season, he might pick up the injury, might clear up. I will side with the Bengals, though. I saw in a defensive performance once it was a home game against the Rams that when their defense gets going, they can they can be up there with the best of them. And in this game, I think they might find a way to slow Dobbs down to a, to an extent where Burrow offensively can do just enough with Mixon and maybe trying to get Chase. I think for them, the key is to get the ball out quickly. They don't have Burrow sitting back there trying to wait for a coverage and wait for players to get open. Let's try the quick dunk passes, screen pass to Mixon. Get Chase. Higgins is obviously a question mark. He's got injured last weekend. It'd be interesting to see. Say he may play, you know, with an injection or be in pain and play. And that's again, we're back to the Joe Burrow situation again. That's not sustainable either. But I'll side with the Bengals. I'm not convinced by it though. It's it says a lot for how where the Cardinals are that we're we're looking at this game. You're going with the Cardinals. I'm not convinced by the Bengals, but I will side with the Bengals because they've got to get this one. Because the Bengals, next three games, Seattle, 49ers. Bills. There is a scenario if they lose this game, they end up one and six or something like that, and the season would be very much done. And maybe they'd have to shut Joe Burrow down at that stage. But I'll keep it. I'll keep the. Uh, I'll keep them alive for another week. I'll go Bengals. That closes out the second second second, second section of the, the Irish NFL show tonight. Segment. I'll be move on to the final segment.